three sources of deflation on the horizon. There's the good deflation associated with innovation, uh, which spurs dramatic growth. Uh, So really good. And to give you a sense of the drama in terms of the deflationary undercurrents, undertoes, that innovation is starting to pull on the economy, uh, we we use uh, one of the most dramatic in DNA sequencing. Now, health healthcare is almost twenty uh, percent of GDP, uh, and it's never seen de- deflation uh, except for patent cliffs, and that's a very bad source of deflation. Uh, healthcare, I don't think, has ever seen good deflation until now. So, DNA sequencing costs for every cumulative doubling in the number of whole human genomes sequenced. And we're in very, very early days now. Uh, So we're going to see a lot of cumulative doublings. For every cumulative doubling, costs decline 40%. Um, This is a bit of a shock to analysts who have watched healthcare and know nothing but inflation and actually base their models on inflation. Uh, in the uh, battery space, battery pack systems for every cumulative doubling, and we're in very early days of electric vehicles, so we're going to see many cumulative doublings. Uh, uh, those costs drop 28%. So think about that. In the transportation sector, deflation driving a boom in electric vehicles. Uh, we're seeing the same in industrial robots. I think it's roughly 25% there. Uh, we're seeing artificial intelligence training costs drop anywhere from 37% to 50% per year. So th- an artificial intelligence is going to permeate every sector, every industry, every company. And those companies not embracing it the way they should uh, are going to lose out competitively. Uh, so we're we're very excited about that source of deflation because it will cause a boom. So that's a deflationary boom. We think that the ramifications of this good deflation uh, are going to include creative destruction, um, uh, 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 the disintermediation or disruption of the traditional world order. And we think that roughly 50% of the S&P 500 um, is at risk uh, of creative destruction, uh, some more, uh, some less, uh, but 50%. Um, and what does this mean? What we think is going to happen here for those companies who spent the last 20 years catering to short-term uh, investors who wanted their profits and wanted them now, um, Uh, Companies were leveraging up to buy back shares, pay dividends, and they were not investing enough in innovation. In fact, many didn't take seriously the idea that innovation was a threat. I know when we started ARC in 2014, auto manufacturers, auto analysts uh, thought, you know, this was something for the mid-20s, maybe. And uh, we were looking at the cost declines in battery pack systems, and we were saying, nope, this is happening now. Uh, And now we see auto manufacturers scrambling, and we would say they're scrambling for dear life. Uh, So we're going to see a lot of that in financial services, energy. So the two uh, sectors that have done best this year, we believe, are two of the most vulnerable sectors. Um, uh, in the energy space, again, up 40% uh, year to date, um, we think that uh, electric vehicles and auto- especially autonomous electric vehicles as they launch within the next few years are uh, going to uh, put a big dent in oil demand. And uh, in within financial services, we see digital wallets evolving so much faster than I think anyone could have dreamed Um, China showed us the way through WeChat Pay and Alipay, and now uh, Square's Cash App and and Venmo are are, uh, moving so quickly that their user base has scaled well beyond J.P. Morgan's uh, customer base uh, in in just a few years, in the last five years, uh, whereas J.P. Morgan got to this level one acquisition at the time. Uh, the digital wallet uh, 
um, evolution or revolution has gone viral. And uh, there's a social networking uh, element to it. So uh, very interesting space. And so financial services um, buyers uh, beware. Uh, so uh, that's that's going that's the bad deflation. Uh, those companies that are too leveraged and have products that will be obsolete are going to have to sell those products at a discount increasingly in order to service their debt. Uh, so good deflation on one side associated with an innovation and bad deflation associated with the creative destruction caused by innovation. The third source of deflation that we believe will take place maybe toward the end of this year, probably more likely next year, is uh, commodity deflation. We believe that there is a lot of double and triple ordering taking place right now. And, uh, and companies never quite know if it is double or triple or ordering. Uh, I think supply chain management systems are getting better, so maybe it won't be as bad as it has been historically. Uh, but we do think that inventories will build uh, to a level um, well above demand, uh, sometime next year, and that the unwinding of them will cause an unwinding of commodity uh, uh, of commodity prices. Um, that said, uh, we want to keep an open mind here. When I see a breakout from a twenty year base, uh, as we've just seen in copper, um, I I pay attention. Now on oil, we have not, and in fact. $140 was the peak in 08, and every peak since then has been at a lower level. Uh, so right now we're at 60, and I believe the last peak we saw was in the either high 70s, low 80s. Uh, so I'd be very surprised if we go above that level. If we do, uh, then we will, you know, score another one for the inflation risks are picking up. Uh, the other thing we're watching is the dollar. Uh, to see the dollar break down would be somewhat concerning. Now, the dollar is priced against other currencies. So part of that is a, a function, perhaps, of our monetary policies relative to um, those elsewhere in the world. And just on that note, I will say, the country that has handled this crisis the best in terms of not throwing money at it willy-nilly uh, is China. And uh, I think that will accrue to their benefit in, in the years ahead. Uh, so so uh, I would say watch that space as well. Uh, so with that, I, I just wanted to um, call out some of our, our thoughts. Uh, we, we do believe deflation is the bigger risk. The reason I like being on that side uh, of the bet is that it seems like everyone is on the other side. Um, and usually, if that is true, then if we're wrong, um, then uh, uh, inflation has been uh, or is being discounted in the market right now. Uh, so... Uh, will be perhaps uniquely wrong. And it's good to be uniquely wrong. If everybody else expects one thing, then it's probably getting priced into the market. Um, but I think these three sources of deflation are going to uh, throw economists off. As I said, I remember feeling very confused in the 06 period. Interest rates were doing this while commodity were going down, while commodity prices were going up. Um, and so it's at these times that if if you do take a stand uh, differentiated from the crowd uh, for good reason, not just to be contrarian, uh, the payoff can can be enormous. And in terms of the recent behavior of value stocks, especially those that we believe are in harm's way compared to the severe drawdown of innovation oriented stocks. Uh, I, I like that setup very, very much. Uh, and just to finish on that note, uh, we have a, a, a five-year time horizon, as do most focused on um, long-term innovation. And uh, it, I, I, in the middle of February, 
those strategies generally, um, uh, according to our analysis, su suggested that innovation re would reward uh, investors, again, if the analysis top-down, bottom-up uh, of the possibilities associated in, with innovation, innovation are correct, would deliver a 15% compound annual rate of return uh, over the next five years. Well, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed except the stock prices have come down. We're in bargain basement territory if our view on innovation is correct, the five innovation platforms. So if, if the, the return expected at the beginning of all of this was 15%, then the return expected now, again, broadly, uh, should be in the 25 to 30 percent uh, uh, range per year on average during the next five years. Um, I love the setup and uh, we do think the bull market has broadened out uh, and we're looking forward to innovation joining the party once again.